What would it be like if so-and-so played this or so-and-so? And it's kind of intuitive without having hit upon somebody to cast. And the sequence starting with the main role, I phoned Stellan and sent him the script. He called me back. No, he sent a, a text message. It won't sell a lot of popcorn, but it's right up my alley. <laughs> Bei der ersten Lesung hat er dann gesagt, And at the first this reading, may well be the most expensive audiobook ever produced. Also, da wusste ich schon aus diesen Antworten, aus diesen Antworten. So, I knew from those replies and the humor that I had guessed right. Das weißt du vielleicht gar And nicht, you might not know this, Nina, but I named a few actors, female actors, to him. It was a trick question, and I said, who could you imagine working with? And he said, Nina Hoss. And I said, well, that fits, because we've got her. Okay, we want Susanne Wolf, uh, I schon seit Jahren Susanne Wolf, I've known for many years. We once played a small silent part with her and she was cut out of the film, so I needed to make up for that and I had a chance for reparation. When I was reading about her, there was this sentence which to me summed it all up. I love you, you know that. Because if you start trying to explain why this woman follows this man around through these very weird thickets and has this experience in New York and then finds out there's more truth to the book than fiction, maybe I wouldn't have known how to answer those questions, but that was the headline to me and I thought that was very liberating to have this very simple but profound sentence as an explanation. And I also liked very much the lead up to that final scene and how she doesn't, like Volker says, says she's not going to be the nagging housewife. Not that I would ever have wanted to be one, but we were trying to do our very utmost to eliminate any of that kind of crap. And then that she's a woman who's not hysterical. She doesn't reproach him for anything. She doesn't keep records and submit the bill. She doesn't say, I love you for this reason. Would you like to add anything? Um, she just says, I'm fed up with being ignored and takes a decision, but doesn't talk to him about that decision. She take, makes her own decision and she lives according to it. She's living in the here and now. And I really enjoyed that about the figure. Perhaps... By contrast, Rebecca is a bit of a dream character, and that is how she enters the film. She really enters the frame rather like a dream character seen through his eyes. And she has to liberate herself from that at some point. And when I read the script, I thought, oh, oh she's very mysterious, but... Uh, Und als sie dann die Geschichte erzählen kann, ihres she's very much the invention of the man. But when she's able to tell her own story, this tragic story, then she's taking her own life into her hands and turning it round and confronting his vanity by talking about her life and saying, do something with this. And he doesn't understand what she needs. And then I thought, this is really interesting. Because what's happening in this woman, I thought, what has she experienced? Why does she confront him again? Why does she agree to do that? following up something that is really in the past, that the past has done to you, even though you thought you'd put it behind you and digested it and got over it and packed it away in your bottom drawer and got on with your successful life and been a success in New York. And suddenly he's back there and you think, oh, I have to confront this. I thought that was interesting. Now for the cinematographer, I regret that he is not here, uh, Jérôme Almeras, uh, because, uh, I mean, we had never worked together, uh, but during the preparation already, I started feeling like an older brother to him, and uh, I had a lot of uh, possibility to hug him because he did it all handhold. I mean, no steady cam, just a handhold camera. 
So he held the camera and I held him. <laughs> and, and this is how we moved uh, uh, mostly uh, through the set. Uh, we just seemed to like the same things, uh, faces and light. No additional light, daylight. Um, we had as our guide, mm, <clears throat> sorry. Uh -huh. He's moved. The great, no, no, it's last night's whiskey. Um, <laughs> uh, the great Sven Nyquist, uh, who, as you know, mostly worked without light and produced these beautiful close-ups uh, in Bergman films uh, where the light seems to come from within the actors. And well, that's what we tried. But also we were blessed that Montauk is known for the beauty of its light. Uh, that's why the American painters, the Impressionist Sergeant Hopper today, um, uh, Julian Schnabel, Eric Fischel, they all go there. It is some well, it's in the air, it's a special light, and that's what you see on screen, and that's what Jerome Almeras uh, managed uh, uh, to, to get on the screen. Uh, another guidance came from Stellan, who remembered Sven Nyquist, uh, who was at a loss what to say to an actor, and he said, well, he should be simple. Oh, yes, simpler. So uh, our guidance was, Jerome, how can we do it simpler? Uh, 